Hi, everybody. Welcome to your weekly broadcast. My name is Lee Honish. Uh, welcome to yet again another episode designed for mostly real estate professionals anywhere around. Uh, my name is Lee Honish. I am a professional marketer and uh, a coach. I am joined, as always, by the CEO and president of Ever Homes, David Bartels. How are you today, David? Good morning. I'm good. Thank you very much. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. You know, from jet setting around the country, by the way, follow both of us on social media. I never plug that. It's David Bartels and mine is at Lee Honish. Uh, so, well, Florida, Lee, well, they're good. allowing, I feel great. I uh, just, they're letting media back into the fight. So I got to cover a fight this past weekend. That was a big deal. Then uh, to Florida for a little golf and R&R &R, and then up to the NAB show in New York. And now I'm back in San Diego. It was a, well, Whirlwind what tour. NAB? You got it. You got it for us novices. NAB is North American Broadcasters uh, Show. Got it. Got it. So, All right. as a as a person who produces content, uh, I feel it's important to see what the latest toys are and what I've seen over the last five years. For those of you who care to know this fact, it used to be about radio antennas and television antennas and things like that, and now. Uh, I just know this because of the shows I attend. They have slowly but surely made media on the internet their uh, main pipeline. So everybody is gearing towards online content. So they're creating better ways of meeting between two people, better better software for people. Uh, all those things are are starting to come onto the market, and it's slow. I've been going to NAB for three or four years now. And it used to be maybe three or four tables of stuff dedicated to the internet. Uh, and now it actually occupies about half the show. So it's uh, very exciting to see that the media in general, and that includes everything you see and broadcast form, is now shifting towards the internet. So that's exciting. Uh, with all of that said, we are here to talk about real estate. And today I'm gonna to do something a little different because we did a little something different last week. Uh, instead of giving you the headline news and worrying about trends and who said what on what television show and what that actually means, uh, we will definitely get back to that. That is kind of our bread and butter and talking trends. I wanna talk about something that I'm implementing in my life on a daily basis. And that is the four agreements, David. And I thought, what a great idea to do, because it's never been done the four agreements for realtors. I know you're already okay. looking at me with disillusionment almost. No, I'm it's not I'm, a, uh, your process. I'm, I'm all for I'm all for refining my soul. <laughs> uh, indeed. But let's talk about this in real estate terms. So for those of you who don't know what the four agreements are, Don Miguel Ruiz wrote a book that pretty much everybody's read who is read a self-help book. It's a phenomenal, phenomenal piece of literature. Um, and it's brutally hard to do. I've got to be perfectly honest. Uh, the first of the four agreements is to be impeccable with your word. Now, normally I would start right there, but uh, as David and I have discussed in the past, uh, and I've actually talked to uh, you know people around me, you kind of have to lower that bar. For realtors, I would say, Agreement number one is to be an advocate to your homeowners. Now, the reason I bring this up and why you're a perfect example, David, you started off primarily as a direct sales person. So let's talk about agreement number one and moving directly to being an advocate instead of being a salesperson. You come from, you know, the Zig Ziglar world of always be selling into what you've progressed into and what everhomes.io has become, which is more of an advocacy service where people have more control over their real estate and their freedom. So how was that shift for you? Um, because it's not always about what you say, as Don Miguel points out in the book, it's how you think as well. So I'd like to hear your take on it. Well, we really strive for transparency, you know, with our relationships. And we don't put the you know, one of the things that I struggle with with the real estate industry, and it's not true of everyone, but there, there's a wide, a large number of people whose primary focus is how much money they can make off that transaction, as opposed to um, the focus on helping people. Now, don't get me wrong, they want to help people, they want to do a good job, 
um, for their people. They know that's how they grow their business, but at the end of the day, um, they will only do that for the right amount of money. And, and so what I focus on is really just taking the time to find out what our clients want and then helping them get it, even if the best solution is a less expensive or less profitable um, program for me um, to do. And that's a that was a difficult transition. And it's hard to convince other agents um, to join our team with a purpose of doing the, the right thing, AKA the best thing um, for the customer. So if you really look at your fiduciary responsibility as a realtor, and, and we all, if you're gonna be a, an agent, you have a fiduciary re, a relationship with your clients. If you're really gonna do that, it really begins with what's in the best interest of the client. And that includes the type of services that you provide and the amount of fees that you charge them to provide, provide those services. So not getting too much into it, but again, we're talking mindset here, right? And uh, just so statistically, everybody knows, 85%, uh, okay, so your daily actions are actually uh, dictated by your subconscious, 85%, right? So learned behavior becomes the way you actually live your life from day to day, so 85%. So it's a small fraction that is actually a mental objective throughout your day. And the reason I bring that up is, the mindset switch, as etherical as that might sound to some people, is what's important here, right? Of what is in the best interest of my client on a daily basis? And that should be the conversation in my head when I'm sitting down with them. Uh, maybe you can expand on that a little bit more. Well, yeah, well, you know, I'm just a big believer of, of do the right, you know, just do the right thing. If you, if you do the right thing, everything works out just like it's supposed to. And so I'll give you a couple of very recent examples. One, uh, these are two transactions, one just closed and one's closing in a week or so. And in both cases, we had conversations with them. They wanted to do our listed with owner program for people who don't know what that is. It's a, it's a hybrid program between for sale by owner and full service listing. So we put, we charge $450 up front and that covers their administrative cost of getting them in the multiple listing service. They can actually go to our app at everhome.io or app.everhome.io and actually list a house in California in about 10 minutes, 15 minutes. I did it nine minutes. Some people take 15, some people take 20. So let's call it 15 minutes. They can actually do that. So in talking to them, I realized based on the kind of relationship they wanted to have that those were the better programs. So I put them on our $450 program. They paid it up front. They bought professional photography, showing services that added another $650 um, to their upfront fees. We put it in the MLS. They, they showed the house. They answered questions about the house. And then when the offer came, comes in, that offer comes to us and we step in and provide full service representation, but we do it for just a set fee of $2,500, regardless of the price of the house. So it's $2,950 plus any cooperating agent commission that might be involved that you offer. So in these two cases, they, I felt, and then I, so I shared the option with them that listed with owner was the right option for them. And they both agreed readily, signed up on the spot for those two programs, for the program. What happened next is really um, quite interesting. So first of all, one of them gives, before we even get him online, he gives us another referral. We get up full service listing because that's the right program for that one. And then in both cases, we ended up representing the buyer. These are both over million dollar, million or over million dollar transactions. And so one of them ended up being a $25,000 um, buyer agent commission. And another one was $27,000, $28,000 um, buyer agent commission. Both came as a result of doing the right thing. And when we ended up bringing the buyer, you know what both of those sellers said? They said, we are so glad you are representing the buyers on these. You so deserve to make that extra commission and we're happy to, and we're happy to pay it. And in one case, they had higher, a higher offer from another buyer but they wanted to use our buyer because they wanted us to get the commission. Now it was only like $20,000 higher, 
but nonetheless, those are the kinds of relationships that you forge when you focus about doing the right thing. And if you're if you're thinking long term about your business, you really just have to focus on how do you on building these relationships that create repeat and referral business. So which there's a couple us, of examples. No, completely. Um, which takes us to step two, right? Once you're in the mindset that I'm going to put the client's needs first of our four agreements. Step two, I'm not going to change uh, perfect uh, anything perfect here for the next two steps. Uh, don't take anything personally, right? Um, how many times, David, uh, in the early going, uh, I don't know for you specifically, I know in my day-to-day -day life that, you know, someone cut me off, right? Nobody in life is doing anything to you. They're doing it for themselves. Our business is dictated by those around us. Um, how for, uh, I guess the question is, how, how is it for you and your business of taking, it's all business. I'm not taking anything personally. <laughs> That's possible. <laughs> it's an attempt. <laughs> so, so, the, so the answer is, is that it's hard not to take it personal because when you're passionate about your business, everything is personal, right? You really want, you really want um, because you live it and you breathe it. I mean, I still walk around thinking I was having this conversation with my wife the other day. We were we were on a walk and we were talking about. Uh, we were talking about doing business with friends. And in doing business, because we had a couple of examples where, you know, because I know other real estate and her best friend is in the real estate business, um, too, has been an agent for a long time. And she knew her before she knew me. And they had another really close friend who ended up selling and using another agent. Didn't use me, didn't call me and talk to me about it. But I didn't know him that well. Didn't, didn't call this other friend that they knew very well because they were like peas in a pod kind of friends and didn't do them. And they, she found out afterward and the relationship got sideways. They don't talk to each other. They don't, they're not friends anymore really as a result of that. And we were talking um, about how dangerous it is to do business with your friends because it is personal, right? And my response was this, and this I think maybe this kind of answers the question is, listen, I don't mind if somebody chooses another agent, okay? If they, want to, they, if they don't think that I'm the right fit, they don't think I'm the right program, we're not the right brand, whatever, and they want to do business with somebody else, you know, they, they shouldn't get any blowback from me. What does upset me and what I do take personally is that if they make that decision without talking to me, if they would just talk to, if they gather the information, if they say no after understanding what we do versus assuming what we do or what we don't do, and then makes a well-informed decision that's in their best interest, then I got, I really have no problem with that. So what, so the area that I'm still struggling with is not taking it personally because they chose somebody else without even having a consultation with me about how I might do it or learning about how awesome I am and how I'm going to do a better job. And to this day, I still feel like what if you choose the decision to list your house or do a transact with somebody other than me, you made the wrong decision, but that's your right to do that. Good luck. <laughs> I still feel that way today. I'm still convinced I'm the right choice for everybody. As you should be. Um... With all of that said, let's go to agreement number three, which I think is an important one. Uh, don't make any assumptions. In our business, it's a lot of paperwork. It's a lot of bodies moving paperwork around. You run Home Loan Advocates as well, which is a mitigation service. Feel free to go to homeloanadvocates.com and insert sure plug there. Uh, but with all of that said, right, this is a big deal for real estate agents. And I can't tell you how many people, including people that have been close to me in my life, I've watched them blow up because of what they think and creating that much negative energy, which is going to reflect in your day. I don't care what anybody says. One item, one resentment is going to create something for the rest of your day. It's going to affect your clients. It's going to, you know, if you're a law of attraction person, let me help you out. You just broke the chain right there. Um, let's talk about making assumptions in real estate and how detrimental that is to your business in general. I mean, that is, this should be of the two items on this list number two and number three to me are the most important i think 
you can on a daily basis not make things personal. It is difficult, but it's doable. Number two, I think you should make assumptions, period. I don't think the word assume should ever come out of your mouth personally. Um, so let's talk about this from a paperwork standpoint and juggling real estate professionals well, uh, as you do on a daily basis. All right. Well, I'm going to, you know, it's interesting. And I hadn't really aligned these two ideas until just now. So thank you. The number one thing that I struggle with in training new agents is the lack of information they have and the assumptions that they make. So here's what I mean. We generate a lot of leads for our agents, right? So we generate, we make about 50 appointments a week for our agents. And so I spend a lot of time working with those agents to see how the conversion process is going, how are they following up, what's going on with those leads, that kind of thing. And the number one most frustrating thing for me is the, the lack of information they have about the buyer. They have these buyers that they have conversations with, they're interested, they want to do something. But when I start asking them very specific questions, so we categorize our, we have multiple categories of leads. So one category is lead. We just know they've made some inquiry, but we don't, we haven't engaged with them. Then we have engaged where we've had some sort of positive engagement with them. Then we have hot, we've engaged with them and they're looking to do a transaction within 90 days. That's what they said, not what we assumed. They said that they, and, and then we have nurture is that we've engaged, but they're not looking to do a transaction for 90 or more days. So that's how we categorize our leads. And so oftentimes I get in there and I see the status is engaged a lot. And when I see that the status is engaged, I want to know, well, when are they buying? Well, I, based on what they said, I think that they're going to buy them. I don't think they're going to be ready until then. I don't. And so my question is to them, all like, well, didn't you ask them? So we have one rule of thumb is not to assume, not to assume anything. When we have a conversation with a buyer, even a seller, but with a buyer in this example, it's who, what, where, when, why, and how much. Who, what, where, when, why, how much. Those are the questions that we need to ask in order to get a clear picture of what they want. You know, and a good example of this might be where people say they're not buying until next year and then they then you call them in three months to check in and they've already done a transaction. Another example of this is they want to live in one city and they won't spend more than $600,000. And then you follow up and you can't find anything. You're efforting, efforting, efforting. There's nothing that meets that criteria. Next thing you know, you engage with them again and they bought in a different town for more money with less bedrooms, with, you know, without the pool they had to have their criteria changed because somebody got to them, dug deep and, got control of that relationship so i think assumptions are really a very difficult um, challenge for real estate agents and salespeople in general to overcome and it's the one thing that you can readily resolve just by asking who what where when why and how much which takes us to the fourth always do your best david um day-to-day -day life working on it as diligently as you can how do you uh really try to wake up suit up and do your best every day well well first of all i you know for me i start with a can-do attitude and when i'm thinking about my listen i wake up trying to do the impossible every single day like what we're doing with ever home impossible i mean no one's ever done most of the stuff no one's ever taking technology that has been the exclusive domain of realtors and put it in the hands of sellers Nobody's ever done. Nobody's ever developed a business model that gives um, sellers a a third model where they've got a you know instead of if a seller right now they have two choices basically they can go unrepresented and go for sale by owner or they can begrudgingly their words not mine begrudgingly overpay a real estate agent to do for them what they feel like they um, should be able to do for themselves and if 93% of buyers can use the internet to buy a home. Why are only 8% of sellers using technology to sell a home? And so we're out solving that problem every single day. It's not how to present it, how to use the technology, how to market the technology, how to train people to do it, how to get real estate agents to think differently about the, the real estate business. These are you know, how to raise the money you need to do it, how to take a company public in you know, less than a year, 
how do, you know all of those things that we're doing you know how do you pay for all this fun we wake up and do every day because nothing is impossible um when you really focus on 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 doing your best it may not happen in the time frame you want but you can achieve any this is something i learned from zig ziglar and i still love this quote i i'll try not to butcher it um but with zig ziglar that i is you can achieve anything in life that you want if you'll just help another enough other people achieve what they want and i think that's really the secret is just having a can-do attitude focus on what you can do not what you can do um doing the very best that you can and looking for opportunities in the same places that other people see a problem and if you, you know one of the things that i love to tell people is if anybody can do it they wouldn't pay you so much to do it so there you go there you go simple as that so step one be an advocate have your client's best interest at heart number two don't take anything personal nobody's doing anything to you in this real estate business they're doing it for themselves um step three or agreement number three uh don't make any assumptions nobody you know let's be honest don't assume that anybody's going to help you with the transaction either you're driving it you want to get paid be on it and number four do your best um it should be a can do every uh, attitude every day wake up and to create those simple situations for yourself and it's really getting in the mental mindset all the time david well i, I you know i want to let me just comment on that you know i think that part of doing your best is doing the things that you don't want to do that you know you need to do in order to achieve the outcome that you desire and i think people lose track of that you know for all the fun that we're having and all the success that we're having, the reality of that is that doing that involves doing a lot of things that I have no interest in doing. I don't like doing it. I don't want to do it, but I've got to get up and do it every single day until I can get to the point where I can pay somebody else to do that for me. And so I get to do a lot of those jobs that I don't want to do and i've got to do it with the best attitude that i that i have and i can, and i have to and i have to i have to do it well and i have to do it every day and so when i think about you know people who are selling real estate one of those things that that i notice that people don't want to do but they need to do well with enthusiasm and confidence every single day is follow up follow up follow up communicate 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 when that phone looks like it weighs about 600 pounds that's when you got to pick it up and 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 dial that phone do your follow-ups every day send your emails every day do your check-ins every day do the things that you don't want to do especially when you don't want to do it it will pay the biggest dividends that you could that you could ever expect nothing will get you more business than having consistent professional communication with your prospects I completely agree. I think the uh, thing to try to avoid is the word, I'm doing fine, right? I wake up, I sit down with my coffee, uh, do a little morning meditation, get myself centered, but I write out everything I want to achieve in that day. Do I get them all done? I don't. I don't even come close. But if I knock a few things off that list, I feel better about the day and I don't look back and go, I did nothing. That's not actual. Yeah. We do we do a lot in a single day. Yeah. Uh, right. And if you just do something as old school as take out a pen and a pad and write down, I got to follow up on this. I got to do this. I need to schedule a dental appointment. Um, you know, maybe send a note to my wife or my girlfriend to tell her um, I'm thinking about her because you were thinking about her at that moment. It's not a lie if you're programming yourself and it'll make your spouse or whomever happier. Um, yeah. Do it. Do it it will uh right. completely create dividends well, for all of you right and if you have trouble sleeping don't do it in the morning do it before you go right. to bed get all I those agree. things out of your brain onto the paper and i promise that you'll sleep better because you're not tossing and turning remembering not to forget <laughs> the things you got to do the next morning so yeah. that's just a pro tip is get your put if you're gonna if you're in the list and i don't do it exactly i don't write it i have computer lists 
but I make sure that that I know what I'm doing the next day. All my top priorities are organized, and I, so when I when I turn off my computer, I can turn off my brain too, and I find that I rest better, and I've got the energy that I need the next day in order to do the things I don't want to do when I don't want to do them. Tell people about Everhome, David. Well, you can learn more about Everhome at everhome.io. I, you know, we're basically a technology company that's um, empowering home sellers to list their home themselves on our easy to use um, technology platform while also getting full service professional representation on the critical elements of negotiations, escrow, title, mandated legal disclosures, contingency removals, contract disputes, that kind of thing. So check us out. It's a new way of doing business. And uh, I'd love to answer your questions about it. And if you're looking for career opportunities, everhome.io, there's ways to reach us through there. There you guys go. We will be back next week. Um, keep an eye out. The show's going to shift a little bit uh, for those of you that listen to the podcast or watch the videos. Uh, it'll be a little different. And we'll go back to our coaching calls kind of on a regular basis here as well. Uh, just go to coachingcalls.info. Uh, coachingcalls.info. There should be a link there if you're watching a video and you want to subscribe or you want to watch David and I talk about real estate and trends to ad nauseum. <laughs> Thanks everybody for being on the call. All right, All right cool. There we go. We have a couple of questions real quick. Let's see if we can knock these out. Um,